I'm here to talk about dreams. Victor Hugo once said that each man should frame his life so that at some future hour, fact and his dreamings should meet. You could call this the zigzag principle. People tend to define success by financial reward. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we don't meet this expectation. Real success comes as a result of living your dreams. Think for a moment how much money you want to make, but what would you do? Think about, think for a moment, not about how much money you want to make, but what would you consider your dream job? Is it the same dream you had as a kid? Are you doing it now? If your answer is no, why not? Sometimes we let others dictate what's best for us. It could be our mothers, husbands, coworkers. We could even be on the right path and then someone walks in and boom, we let our hormones get in the way. I fell in love with hockey the moment I saw Bobby Orr flying through the air when he scored the winning goal to capture the Stanley Cup for the Boston Bruins in 1970. At that moment, I wanted to work in the higher echelon of hockey. I wanted to actually coach the Boston Bruins. I'd trek down to the local rink to offer coach I trekked down to the local rink to offer to coach mites or peewees. They wouldn't even look at me, though I knew, or I thought I knew about. I trekked down the local. I trekked down to the local rink to offer to coach mites and peewees, although they wouldn't even look at me, even though I thought I knew about hockey more even though I thought I knew more about hockey than they did. Then I would send away for information on hockey to hockey schools and not one of them returned my requests. Then I would send away for information on hockey schools, but not one of them would return my request. I changed my strategy and used the name Derek. My mailbox overflowed with brochures and they kept coming after I moved out. The dream never left me, but it was on the back burner when I met my husband. Before the end of our marriage, I was introduced to Stan Fischler through my pen pal in New York City, which led me to becoming his intern and research reporter in Edmonton. Stan was well known as a hockey writer and broadcaster and has published hundreds of books. He also publishes a weekly newsletter that is circulated to every NHL team, prof professional hockey team and anyone who's anyone in hockey. Once I was out on my own and free from an abusive husband, I started attending Orla games and interviewing players. These were the days of the Oilers' dream team. Wayne Gretzky, Paul Coffey, Gary Curry. This was so more exciting when I compared it to my desk job as a bookkeeper. And it made me take another look at my dream. Coaching in the NHL was obviously unrealistic, but maybe I could make it as a broadcaster. So I went to broadcasting school and I started out with some string sports reporting besides continuing to do research for Stan. And I covered the Edmonton Oilers, the Trappers and the Edmonton Eskimos. I also covered the 1984 Canada Cup. I was the only woman reporter at the time. From there, I was fired as the town reporter for the Vulcan Advocate and was faced with moving to Calgary, not knowing a soul and not having a job. I had no time to think about what I was going to do, so I went into survival mode. I sold manufactured housing 
insurance, audiovisual equipment, and put food on my table. Then came the Olympics. I had to be on that hockey committee. That ho then came the Olympics. I had to be on that hockey media committee and I got my wish. I oversaw the press box for all the Saddle Dome events and was there when Brian Orser got his silver medal. When asked to join the board of directors of the Calgary Colts junior football team in 1986, I ended up being president for three years, assistant general manager for about eight, worked with Stampeder greats like Wayne Harris and John Helton and was president of the Prairie Football Conference and an executive there for six years. And I was the first woman to preside over a football conference in Canada. In 1988, I was PR director for the AAA baseball team, the Edmonton Trappers, and was able to work with people like Dante Bichette, Brad Pounders, Sandy Alomar Jr. And I have worked in the National Hockey League with Stan Fischler, writing for the Fischler Report, NBC Sports, and Sports Ticker, interviewing thousands of players. I also assisted with pre and post game interviews for Sports Channel America. And I also assisted with pre and post game interviews. And in between, I also assisted with pre and post game and in between period interviews with Sports Channel America and the broadcasts of the New York Islanders and the New Jersey Devils. My interview port, oh, scratch that. I've had many doors close in front of me. Instead of giving up, I open another door. I try not to listen to those who keep telling me I can't do it. And I concentrate on figuring out how to do it. When I'm stuck, I go to those who are already doing it and I ask questions. I've learned that to get the right answer, you don't have to accept advice from someone who doesn't know. I've learned that I, oh, hold on. I've learned that to get the right answer, you don't accept advice from someone who doesn't know, but from those who do know. For instance, as the president of the Prairie Football Conference, there were some controversial issues I had to deal with, but I had no peers. I'd seek advice from people such as the Calgary Flames president at that time, Ron Bremner. There's always a risk involved when you wade through the path. People usually see the results rather than what you had to do to get there. The best way to learn is to endure hardship as a discipline. And believe me, I did that. Or you can look at John Madden. He has the most prolific quote, easy street goes through the dump. The road usually twists and turns and changes directions and you will find you will not be on the same path that you expected to be. That was certainly the case for me, and I think that I did pretty good. The bottom line is that I dared to go where few women have ever dared to go, and a lot of men wish they could have gone. Amongst a male majority, though, I could not rest on my laurels, and that kept me fresh. I've written and published 17 books. My message has always been, try any opportunity that comes along. Go for it, whether it works out or not. The worst thing that could happen is spending the rest of your life wondering what could have been. What if? I don't live in a fancy house. I don't own a car, but as a writer 
and sports administrator and being able to work in a in professional sports, I've done everything I wanted to do and more. Next time someone tries to talk you out of your dream, don't listen. Have the courage to go for what you want. Remember the words of Michael Jordan. I failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. So do it, just do it, just Try it, risk, risk something to go for it, sacrifice something to go for it. You may fail, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Failing is not a death sentence. It is how you grow. And there is no time limit on education. All you can do is try. And that is all there is and um the force is with you go force yourself to do it stop recording